Meat, snot, and gob. Looks like they're up to something again. Hey, are you guys gonna try and make someone immortal? Whoa, who is this? I'm guessing this guy has no idea what loneliness is. I think we found just the guy you're looking for. I can't wait to find out how you're gonna make him immortal. Transplanting Voorhees DNA into the handsome dude is a great idea. From a biological standpoint, you can make a person immortal. To achieve this, you simply need to remove from the DNA the propensity to age and suffer from disease. But today, Snot and Gob are trying to figure out how can you kill something that's immortal. The first test is teleportation. To move an object from point A to point B, you need to move all the atoms and neural connections exactly as they were in the original. After that, the original has to be destroyed, with only the perfect copy remaining. Therefore, theoretically, teleportation kills both a mortal and an immortal. Hmm, I was expecting a slightly different result, but it's much too early to give up. Here we have an alkaline bath that can dissolve any living creature. It's a shame these aliens didn't watch Breaking Bad, because after all, then they know that alkali will dissolve a bathtub faster than a human body. I think the next test is gonna kill you for sure, handsome dude. It's gonna start by destroying your brain. No one on this planet can endure something like this for more than a day. You're still alive! Okay, <laughs> lucky for us, Snot and Gob just so happened to steal this huge meat grinder yesterday. <coughs> what are we waiting for? The meat grinder ain't gonna turn itself on. He seems to have lost his memory. More precisely, all his neural connections have been destroyed, and his mind is like a pure white sheet. In some way, we've killed him. And what shall we do with that now? I don't know, but it'll be something interesting. Uh... Wait a minute. Why would you want to kill an immortal? Uh... Ah, you want to get rid of me and take over my show. Damn, he's on to us. Time to slip away. It's okay, we'll create our own show, and then we're going to be great! Get out! I'm sorry, dude, I didn't even ask your name. Oh, Arnold. Nice to meet you. Wow, Arnold, congratulations! You died and went to heaven. Arnold, get in line and wait for St. Peter to let you in. Ooh, how cool is this? Hey, wow, look, is that John Lennon? No, wait, it's just Jesus. Here there's even a wall of paintings of God made by great historical artists. Here there's e in ancient times, people believed that God was oh. terrifying and bloodthirsty. For example, Aztecs constantly sacrificed people to their god Huitzilopochtli to make it rain. The ancient Greek gods personified human qualities or natural phenomena. Unfortunately, Arnie, in the Christian paradise, unlike the Muslim one, you don't get 72 virgins. But hey, look, right there, it's John Lennon! Or is that Jesus again? And here he is. He has many names. The Creator, Jehovah, Adonai, Yahweh, God. Sleeping. You probably shouldn't mess with his stuff, Arnie. Arnold, what are you thinking? You can't go in there. This is the control center for the whole world. Don't touch anything, Arnold. Oh, this is not good. Over the past few centuries, religious belief in the world has been dropping. 
And God is the most popular being in the world has a lot of haters. You dare play God, Arnold. Man is simply too greedy for this role. There are lots of examples from history, and they all ended pretty badly. Arnold, stop! This ain't a joke, buddy. Great. Now everything's gone haywire. Fanatical faith has always led to wars. And now a nuclear crusade has begun. Arnold, stop before it's too late. Are you even listening to me? Phew, just in time. He's walking around the zoo today. Hey, Dipknob, stop acting like you're king of the beasts. Have some respect, Arnold. You and the chimpanzee share ancestors. We diverged from them seven million years ago. Life lived in the forest and in open plains simultaneously helped us develop bipedalism and our upright posture. This in turn freed up our hands for tool use and other useful activities such as taming fire. Cooking food helped contribute to better and faster digestion, which together with some other things led to us developing our bigger and better brains. Yes, Arnie, I know it's hard to believe, but the march of evolution is still ongoing. For example, because we began to cook food before eating, our jaws have shrunk and wisdom teeth have already stopped growing in 20% of human beings. In addition, along with the improvement in the quality of food, the average height of Homo sapiens has increased by 10 centimeters. But then again, so has his weight. However, for modern people, it's not body changes that are so important, but technology. It allows us to move around while sitting, fly, and even get a cold beer without getting out of our comfy chairs. What'll be next? Wow, look! It looks like scientists have created a supercomputer that can predict our future. And it has a message for us. Let's listen. Over the past hundred years, the number of people on the planet has quadrupled. At the same time, humanity has destroyed 80% of all animal fauna. And environmental pollution has already led to irreversible climate change. Therefore, in the future, due to global warming, our bodies will stretch, our skin will darken, and our ears will grow out for better heat dissipation. Whoa, Arnold, you look a lot like your neighbor, Henry. But the fact is, in the last 150,000 years, Homo sapiens' brains have shrunk by 200 grams, and they're continuing to shrink. A more comfortable life leads to inactivity and degradation. Homo sapiens could lose his intelligence forever. Hmm, well that's funny. I thought no one cared. Those are some beautiful, large vegetables. Hey, stop eating in the store! Those vegetables are GMO, genetically modified organisms. This tomato contains a silkworm gene. And your normal, everyday cucumber has a 40% similarity to a human from a genetic standpoint. But don't be afraid. GMO isn't scary. And I know just how to prove it to you. Let's genetically modify you, Arnold! It's illegal to do such experiments on human beings. But in 2018, two genetically modified babies were born in China. They were programmed to have immunity to HIV. Now, we're in the Pentagon's tippity-top secret laboratory. They mainly produce GMO soldiers. CRISPR-Cas9 is a new technology that allows the DNA of one organism to be implanted into the DNA of another. A regular fish was implanted with genes from a bioluminescent jellyfish. Now it's a glowfish. Vegetables are modified for longer storage and better taste. But what about you, Arnold? Do you want to be taller? We can use the Michael Jordan gene. and. We'll remove the sweating gene from you, so you stop stinking so much. And meet Arnold 2.0. A new life has begun. Without sweat, people will finally sit next to you on the bus. 
and your neighbor's <laughs> grandma will stop calling you a short little redheaded virgin. Now she'll just call you a redheaded virgin. Yes, genetic engineering isn't perfect yet, but it is the future. Designer GMO babies are coming soon. And it'll be possible to remove the cruelty gene from criminals. It's a new stage of evolution. Sweet dreams, Arnold 2.0. Hey, what's going on? Arnold, did you steal all the syringes from the lab? What, you want to inject yourself with the strawberry gene to smell good? And a corgi gene for a perfect butt? Don't do this, Arnold. Stop! Oh, ye gods, what have we done? I was wrong. Genetic engineering is dangerous, not only for the organism, but for the whole city as well. Are you in a hurry to go to your favorite job? But why is everyone so gloomy? What? The boss says you beat up Chris yesterday, dumped trash on Jamie's desk, and did something disgusting with Miss Wallet. Of course, you don't remember any of that. But your colleagues don't care. Run, Arnie! This is the end, buddy. Farewell to your one true love. And here he is, our hero of the day. A strong blow to the head has woken up Jacob again, Arnie's other personality, or in scientific terms, his alter ego. It's called Dissociative Identity Disorder. With this disease, power over the body of the patient is completely captured by another personality. The cause of the disorder may be trauma during childhood. The child blocks off memories of bad events and starts to consider himself someone else. Jacob, unlike Tim and Arnold, doesn't suffer from multiple complexes. He's fearless and sexy, and he'll stop at nothing. Even somebody as petulant as Tagai is intrigued. But there is one thing. Jacob can only speak Dumi, which is a language common to only Eastern Nepal. The alter ego often differs from one's main personality in the language of communication, gender, age, nationality, and even IQ. And in especially exotic cases, the alter ego can be an animal or even a religious figure. The maximum number of alter egos in one person was identified in an American criminal named Billy Milligan, who had 24 different full-fledged personalities. Billy was acquitted in court as crimes he committed were actually committed by one of his alter egos, unbeknownst to Billy himself. Arnold, just look at what you've done. It seems now you think you're a psycho and you need to be treated. But split personality is not schizophrenia, and there's simply no cure. What's that? An SMS from Tagai. She wants you to come to her now. Inside Arnold, there can be only one. Well, finally, it looks like it's all over. And guess what? Your body dumped that extra alter ego. Good boy. Hey, don't touch anything here. Somehow, your imbecility is heraldic, Arnold. You've managed to fulfill the dreams of oh so many. To be absolutely alone on a massive cruise ship. Woohoo! For just a simple seven day trip, they have more than 12,000 eggs, 380 kilograms of ice cream, and two tons of seafood and meat on board. This amount of food will be enough to last you around five years if you eat it all by your lonesome. 
After going on a cruise like this one, people on average gain up to 3 kilograms of excess weight. Cruise ships have a ton of entertainment, so much so in fact that for most passengers, 7 days isn't enough to do and see it all. Oops, looks like we're out of fuel. At full speed, the ship burns up to 5 tons of fuel per day. Now you'll drift in the ocean just like all the other cruise liners do, because it's cheaper than staying in port. Arnold, looks like your vacation's gonna be a wee bit longer than we expected. A whole month has passed. I wonder where this current will carry you. Congratulations, Arnold! Now the whole world hates you! Yay. Pack your bag, schmucko! Your vacation is over! One fine day, which didn't portend disaster at all, Arnold got locked up in a hypermarket until the end of his days. You may ask why, and the answer is just because. I simply wanted to lock him up in a hypermarket. Here you can eat sweets and candy bars all day long, and you can drive around the store in a cart. At your disposal are goods for recreation, sports, clothes, and even medicines. On average, there are 120,000 different products in a hypermarket that will provide you with 50 years of a carefree life. But unfortunately, without electricity, a large part of these goods are going to spoil the very next day. At room temperature, the entire ton of milk that's in the store will be gone in just 18 hours. Fresh chicken, pork, and beef will all go bad within a day. Cakes and pastries will last a little longer, maybe 36 hours, if you're lucky. You could try to prepare. You could salt the fish and dry the bread. Then their shelf lives will be extended by years. But hey, seize the day, right Arnold? After a week, vegetables and fruits will also go bad and you'll have to switch to cereals. But even just their preparation will deplete the limited supply of water you can drink by at least 10 years. You could try to extend that by filtering it through coal from the gardening department and then cleaning it with silver. Okay, so from now on, your usual meal is going to be canned food. Beef stew can last almost indefinitely if the packaging isn't damaged. And pickled cucumbers and tomatoes can be an additional source of water. So, the three tons of canned food that are in the store will last you for eight years. And then the last remaining source of food will be... Many things can be used for other purposes. For example, you can wipe your bum with just about any kind of paper. You just need to crumple it up thoroughly and, well, use it. Just like our great-great-grannies did. And when you run out of cash, you can always use the card. You're gonna do it in a special way this time. We're gonna handcuff you. And the coffin's gonna be made out of metal. Okay, Arnie, buddy. Ready? Get in. During past burials, you already learned the most important rule. You need to breathe calmly and deeply in order to conserve your oxygen. Okay, now quit being calm. We need to get the handcuffs off. It's really simple. All you need to do is break one finger on each hand so you can slip them through the cuffs. Oh, quit your belly aching, Arnie. You still got two more fingers left. Use your belt or watch to try to crack open the lid. A metal coffin has weak points all along the edges. Come on, Arnie, I was kidding. You can't break through the metal, doofus. There's two meters of earth above you, which is pressing down with a mass of almost two and a half tons. So this third burial will probably be your last. Arnie. Arnie. Arnie, where are you? Oh, you little bastard. Yes, you really are Arnie Houdini. In just the same way, Harry Houdini climbed through a secret compartment in the sidewall of the coffin and into a tunnel. And then through a hatch in the grave, he dropped down on the coffin from above and covered himself with a half meter layer of dirt. But where's the hatch, Arnie? Surprise! You didn't really think I'd let you out so easy, did you? Swim up, Arnold, before the concrete sets. Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you. The concrete solution, when interacting with water, forms alkaline molecules. And because there's a lot of moisture in your skin, then, well, it's gonna hurt. 
Congratulations, Arnold. You did it. You managed to attract attention to yourself. Revel in the glory. Arnold, where are you going to live now? It looks like in the woods. Well, I'm not even worried. You probably already know that you gotta stuff leaves under your shirt to keep warm, filter your drinking water, and no, don't eat anything, idiot! So, while you're not yet too far gone, listen carefully all around you. The noise of a tractor can be heard from three to four kilometers away. A dog barking two to three kilometers away. A train going by can be heard from 10 kilometers away. And BTS songs, well, you can always hear them. Yee, what's that, Arnold? Ooh, just look. This little kid, he's lost, just like you. After all, slow lorises live mainly in tropical forests. Don't even try to pet him, Arnie. Lorises lick their elbow joints, which secrete a deadly venom so their bite can kill you. You should follow animal paths. It'll be great if you can find flowing water, a stream or river. Here you can get food by catching fish. Yeah, uh, Arnold, doing it that way, you'll be here all day. And as you can see, I was right. Night is the most dangerous time in a forest. Hey, uh, buddy, I think you ought to spend the night here in this tree. Yeah, it ain't the Ritz, but it sure is safe. In the morning, you need to get to a clearing so you're visible to rescuers. Finding a person in a forest is a very special operation involving rescuers, volunteers, and the military. The terrain is divided into squares, and each one is thoroughly combed. There was a case where somebody who was lost without knowing it ended up looking for himself. This guy managed to get out of the forest, didn't tell anyone, and joined in the search looking for him. You can be seen from the air if you make a fire. It's best to throw fresh foliage on it to make it really smoky. Oops. It's not the rescuers who found you, but a local hunter. He saw your fire. Congratulations, Arnie. You made it home. Hello. Being an experienced astronaut, he was entrusted with delivering fresh supplies of food and clothing to the International Space Station. Arnold, stop eating food that's meant for the crew. What do you have there? Don't tell me. That's a homemade burrito. Did you make it for the astronauts? The rocket has successfully docked with the ISS. Get ready! To open the door, you need to click on the green button in three, two, one. Green button, Arnold! Green! I doubt that any of the astronauts are going to rush to your aid after you left them without any food. You have enough air for eight hours. Somehow, during this time, you have to get to the ISS by yourself. Moving your body around ain't gonna do nothing. Even if you run like Sonic, your body's gonna stay in one place. So, here are some real options for moving in space. The first option is using the air from your oxygen tank. Air moves through its tubes at a speed of 50 kilometers per second. This kind of energy, in just 60 seconds, could carry you as far as 3 kilometers. But this will significantly reduce your air supply. So, let's move on to the second option. Burrito. You wrapped it in foil, and foil is an excellent reflector. If you make a sail out of the foil, then particles of light reflecting off of it will transmit their momentum to the foil and thereby accelerate you through space. Did you hear nothing I said about a sail? Son of a schmuck! Ooh, we could use that too. Gases exit the human body at a speed of 3 meters per second, and they can fill an entire balloon in a day. You just need to think of a way to let them out. Arnold, what are you up to? How many burritos did you eat? Just a little bit left. Stretch! And... Remember that show Love, Death and Robots? 
You're oh. going to have to tear off your hand. Okay, or just your finger. You only have three meters left. Detach part of the suit and throw it in the opposite direction. This will push you forward. <laughs> Ooh. Hmm. Quick, make a wish. Ah. Deja vu. Calm down, you paranoid pinhead. Stray animals often break into houses to find food. Or maybe the world around you is a simulation. Relax, buddy, it's an optical illusion. If you change your viewing angle, everything falls into place. But after all, truth be told, everything you see really is just a figment of your brain's imagination. Light entering your retina is converted into an impulse that transmits information to the visual image processing system. From there, the signal goes to your brain and you see what you see. And when... Woo! Woo! What a beauty! Hmm... Another glitch or a consequence of popular trends in mass markets? Such synchronicity can make you think you're losing your mind. Yes, Arnold, you're right, this definitely needs to be recorded. But take your phone out of your pocket slowly and carefully, buddy. Or the police might think that you're reaching for a weapon. This is how the illusion works. The reticular formation in your brainstem becomes excited. Hey, where are you going, you coward? Arnold! Who's this? No, no, no! Don't even think about it! This is not the Matrix! That's a bad idea, Arnold! Almost as bad as making a sequel to the legendary trilogy. Meet Arnold is a hallucination, and the effects are now 300 times stronger! And Arnold's brain turns into goo. In fact, just like him. Arnold, I know you're a little tired of all of our experiments. How about some happy time for you then? We can arrange that. Here, take this remote. As you can see, it has three buttons. Press the first one. You've just traveled three billion years back in time. Only unicellular organisms live during this era. No pain, no humiliation. So Arnold, you happy now? On second thought, to be honest, I'm worried for humankind if you should somehow become its founding father. Ah, uh, how's this for a change? Earth, 2020, and you're now the happiest human alive because you're the only human alive. Everyone else on the planet disintegrated when a dark matter experiment went awry. What are your plans, Arnold? Hey, where are you going? I wonder how long you can survive. With no one to work at power plants, there's no more electricity. And that means no heat, no fridge, and no clean water. Maybe you should look up some survival tips on the internet. Oh, wait, there's no internet anymore. You're just going to have to figure out how to survive on your own. Water. Bottled water has a shelf life of about two years, and you can sterilize river water with strong alcohol. What about food? The only food products with an unlimited shelf life are rice, powdered milk, and honey. And to be honest, I think it's unlikely you're ever going to master the art of hunting. To diversify your diet, you're going to have to move to Mexico. It's warmer there and you can take up farming. You're also going to need to acquire some medical skills so you don't die the first time you cut yourself. And even after solving all these basic survival issues, you'll have to try not to lose your mind from the absolute and unrelenting loneliness. Well, looks like you made it, Arnold. Alone and without all those pesky people who produce foodstuffs, build houses, manage water treatment facilities, monitor sensors at nuclear power plants, and control space stations. It's time for the third button, Arnold. And you've still got two fingers left to press it. I believe in you, man. Press the button. Hey, when did you manage to get to the seaside? So, what's the whole beach set for anyway? Ah, is this to get Bertha's attention? Wow, it actually worked. She invited you to visit her. But, hey, buddy, do you have enough money for a ticket? I have an idea. You can fly to Bertha in extra super duper economy class. And instead of the usual tablet and pillow, you're going to need food, water, and a porta potty. Don't worry, Arnold. You're not the first one to travel like this. Reginald Reg Spears, without any money, got all the way to another continent in just three days. Nowadays, warehouses are like cities with their own laws and regulations. The probability of losing a package is reduced to a minimum. Robots work on the conveyors by reading special barcodes. This reduces the risk of
of human error. In 2019, China set a world delivery record with 345 million packages delivered in just one day. The worst thing that can happen to a package is that it can get detained in a port at customs. I agree, for the person inside, this ain't like staying at the Ritz. Finding yourself in a confined space under the blazing hot sun is a difficult task to endure. Arnold, hang on, little buddy. It's just a little longer now. To be precise, 23 days, 17 hours, and 45 minutes. And a person is not the most amazing thing ever delivered in a package. An entire bank was transported this way. It was dismantled and sent to another city. Welcome to Australia, Arnold. One of the benefits of traveling by package is courier delivery right to the final destination point. Bertha will be here any minute. Wow, what a babe. Arnold, are you ready? Good look for you, Arnold. She definitely won't forget you like that.